Hello, it's uh, Rachel Lawson here again from the Drupal Association. And after we've all recovered from DrupalCon, I've asked the Drupal 10 Readiness te Initiative team to come back and tell us all about their experiences at DrupalCon North America. Um, so I'd like to welcome uh, Kristen, Chris, Gabor and Lowry. Hello everyone, how are you doing? Hello. Talking about how you're doing, um, I don't know about you, but I always find DrupalCon an extremely intense uh, period of time, not only the actual main week of DrupalCon, but the lead up to it and the fact that we've had Drupal Fest this time as well, which has been much longer. So I'm sure that well, you've all, it would have been incredibly intense for all of you as well. So how have you been um, relaxing and de-stressing since? Uh, Lowry, I hear you've been building a house. Yeah, that's definitely taken a big chunk of my, my focus uh, the last couple of weeks. Uh, we're expecting to move in in June, so uh, wow. it's coming close to the end. I don't know, uh, I don't know if, it, if it's, it's, a, it's a shift of focus, but it's definitely not de-stressing uh, <laughs> itself. Yes, absolutely. So has anybody else been taking on any major projects since and just generally finding different ways to work? Well, I, uh, we moved in a couple of, like less than a month before DrupalCon, and I'd be basically been putting off a ton of different stuff that needs to be done in the house uh, in preparation for DrupalCon. It's like, okay, I've got time for this many things. So um, yeah, so I had a Trello board of tasks that were building up. So as soon as uh, DrupalCon was over, it's like, uh, yeah, finished building a shed and building all the furniture and uh, all sorts of stuff. So wow. um, yeah. Um, Certainly a was, distraction. <laughs> yeah. Anybody yeah. else, what have you been up to? Well, on that theme, since we're talking about homes and whatnot, so I've been doing country living and now we're trying to shift back to our normal normal house, which is not quite so country living, and uh, have to like restart our construction project because it's been on hold for a year and a half. And um, it's really hard to find construction people now because they're really, really, really busy. So um, yeah. So we're trying to do the friends and family thing. We had a, a my my niece's husband is an electrician, so we bribed him <laughs> to our house <laughs> for a weekend and paid for him to to help us. So, yeah. So next is plumbing, and I don't know any plumbers, so we'll see. <laughs> people watching the video can reach. Out. <laughs> yeah, if you happen to be Maybe a plumber so. in, in the Santa Cruz area, let me know. <laughs> It would be so funny if somebody actually does now. <laughs> Pretty hilarious. Yeah. How about yourself, Gavin? Anything in particular? How have you managed to? Uh, yeah, stress? I took a week off after DrupalCon because it was so tiring. Um, that I, I've been involved with a Dries node and a bunch of other things. Yeah. So I needed a sizable rest, um, spend time with family. And then just as I got back uh, this Monday, I got my COVID, COVID shot. So that was interesting because as I was about to get back to work, I got my shot and then I, and, and then I was off for two days again. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it can affect people like that, actually. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Well, we probably should look back at DrupalCon then just for a moment, seeing as that's why I asked you here. Um, so morning's keynote at DrupalCon gave you, the Drupal 10 Readiness Initiative team, a chance to speak to the whole DrupalCon audience about the initiative and help move the Drupal project forwards. It's something we've never done before like that. Do you think you managed to say all of the things that you felt were important at that time and managed to get them across to the audience? And uh, are there any things that you want to add that you didn't get a chance before, do you think? I think the I think the project readiness for Drupal nine is a very interesting area that we need to explore a lot more. Uh, that we have a lot of uh, patches in the queue waiting and a lot of maintainers we need to convince to accept those patches. So I think that's an area where we could still improve a lot, um, and and have have more ideas and thoughts about how to improve that. And I think Kristen uh, mentored uh, various people on that 
area. Uh, but we definitely need to have more focus on that as well because we are uh, we are way better than our uh, our update scale was from Drupal seven to eight. We can always improve even more. Yeah, absolutely, it's always better. So really pushing that message is something that you want to do about making sure that everything that's necessary is at Drupal nine because that makes Drupal ten so much easier. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I think uh, uh, inviting more maintainer <laughs> contributing maintainers to the contribution event, uh, yeah, would have been pretty awesome. Uh, I think one thing in retrospect, um, having done the contribution event, I think making it very clear that um, if you don't want to be on video to join, you can you don't have to be on video. If you don't even want to be on audio, you can just kind of hang out and watch which was a new aspect, which I thought was really cool. And then if you wanted to jump on video, you could. So we had kind of a nice mix of people who were like different levels of, you know, comfort level of uh, participation, which um, I didn't, you know, I didn't really know how it was going to play out. Um, so I didn't really make that clear, but I think that would have, might have been interesting to some people who maybe were hesitant. It's, it's a good question. It's a, it's a good point, actually. It's not a question I'd really thought about before, but in terms of how we did contribution uh, at DrupalCon North America, especially bearing in mind we had people thousands of miles apart working together. Uh, we used a, new, a, a fairly new platform and played around with it, and we changed how we did things as the week went along. Um, and from what I've heard from people, the ability to have breakout rooms of video was useful. But what I'm hearing from you also is maybe there's something we can do about helping guide people who don't want to be on audio and video, but just want to co-work on things and know what other people are working on. Yeah, is that is that something that would be something we can better instruct people on? I'll guide them. Yeah, I, I agree that highlighting the opportunity that you can just be a fly on the wall and observe how the how it's made um, and see what's going on and how things are done. And you don't need to necessarily dedicate yourself as a I'm here contributing uh, person um, is a good point that we should that we could emphasize in the future. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one, actually. Yeah, we can do that. Absolutely. Uh, and bring that out. Uh, I know we had a lot of we had people contributing for the very first time um, at DrupalCon. I noticed even there was one person, and I've completely forgotten their name now. Uh, but they were they were already commenting and progressing an issue forwards, and I think it was a Drupal ten readiness one before their account was even twenty four hours old, which was kind of cool. <laughs> I was really pleased with that. True challenge of contribution at DrupalCon though, isn't necessarily how many issues get fixed in that week, but how we attract people and hook their attention so that they keep coming back in the weeks and months following. Have you any thoughts about how the Drupal 10 readiness team can keep those people interested and engaged? I'll take so it, I think I'll something that out. has worked in the past is having regular meetings uh, with the community members that is sort of easy for them to join and participate, figure out uh, what people are actually working on and, and where they could help um, at the moment. Uh, I think that that is something that's worked in the past. Uh, just like with the regular DrupalCon format. And I think the same works in this case, I don't think that necessarily changes. Yeah, I think for us, it's we have a lot of different areas of work. So we have regular meetings on CK Editor, we have regular meetings on uh, general Drupal 10 readiness uh, and other things. So that people can find their, their uh, niche or their specific sub community to get involved with. And that helps with uh, staying around. So if you had a message for anyone watching this who was thinking, oh, well, I kind of want to get 
involved again and continue, what should they do at the end of this video? Where should they go? We are assembling at the Drupal D10 readiness channel on Drupal Slack. Uh, so they can join there and be a fly on a wall and see how it's going yeah. and then get involved when they feel comfortable. Uh, we all, we have discussions on every other Monday. The next one is coming up uh, next Monday. So, well, depending on when the video goes up, uh, the next one is coming up on May 10th. Um, uh, so we have these discussions there. Anybody can come and raise uh, questions that they, they think they need answered and we can discuss it there. Wonderful. And there's never a wrong question. It's always... Indeed. Everyone is welcome and everyone is welcome to say and give their input to anything. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, I would say one thing about <clears throat> uh, the mentoring aspect. And I think that for some people that's super critical, uh, being able to have someone there. And um, so one thing, I mean, I don't, uh, Chris maybe can chime in too on the mentoring part, but um, I know in the in the distant past we used to have regular mentoring office hours. I don't think that's ha been a thing for a while. Um, maybe uh, Rachel, you know if if maybe I'm wrong, but I, I don't think so. <clears throat> it's true. Uh, we stopped doing the mentoring hours. Uh, we weren't getting the take up at that time. However now that there are more directed ways of working and a lot of the initiatives and things like that uh, maybe starting that up again would be really cool would be a really great thing that we can do um and i know i was chatting with ellie last week uh, one of the core mentoring coordinators and chris has just joined us as a core mentoring coordinator which is really cool thank you chris um is how we could be training up more mentors to make that take place. And one of the things we're looking at is maybe having a contribution event where we train mentors purely for, not for actually fixing any issues, but helping people think that they can mentor others and so on. Uh, so it's something that we're looking at at the moment. Uh, so yeah, it could be fun. Um, yeah, one so the, sorry, I just want to say one of the other things that we definitely try to do when helping out when mentoring somebody is try to at least to some extent engage a sort of mentor mentee relationship where maybe you get the slack um account details and you chat to them and later on after a few weeks whatever hey how's it going did you see the the issue that you worked on it's gone through well done you know if you want to take a look at another issue i can we can help you with that um trying to sort of carry on that um, and in person, it's, it's a lot easier when going to multiple events, if you run into the same person again, you could be like, oh, hey, I remember, you know, I had you out with some stuff, how's it going? Um, that's obviously a lot harder virtually, but, um, but yeah, at least on Slack, we can kind of reach out. Yeah, I mean, I did tell people, you know, DM me, totally fine, reach out of the blue, it's no problem whatsoever, but I haven't heard any but I mean that is something that not everybody is comfortable with and so yeah I guess trying the reverse might be interesting as well um, one thing that I thought about doing because for the uh, you know a couple mentioned it about the uh, the d8 to d9 readiness aspect of this is um, I was thinking about trying to become a co-maintainer on some of the ones that we actually moved forward during the event so that at least I could get those over the hump. There was you know, just a handful, but that would maybe show them, oh no, it can work and it can get, you know, get all the way through. Um, and that might, might help, you know, inspire them a little bit more rather than having stuff sort of just sit and then be like, well, what did I do all that for? Yeah, it, it is a challenge. It is. Yeah. And I'm sure we can help with that and make sure that the messages get through for getting co-maintainer. And maybe if anybody else wishes to volunteer to, I don't know, join you in that mission, that would be kind of cool because it's a bit of a big thing to take on just as one person. But if there was a few of you as a little team, that would be great. Speak to Kristen, you know, 
that would be great. Okay, uh, just one more question then. So we know we DrupalCon North America, we took a slightly different approach, approach and we had these uh, different initiatives on different days, uh, which meant that we were looking at some things related to the strategic objectives of the project. But we couldn't cover all of the strategic objectives of Drupal because, well, there's quite a few. Um, so if we were to do something similar to this again and concentrate on a, on a small number of initiatives, are there any particular initiatives, either existing ones or ones yet to be thought of that you think we should include for a day? Bug smash day would be interesting. For what? Sorry, bug smash day. Yeah, for the bug, the bug smash initiative. Yeah, dedicate. I mean, they were they were co-located with uh, automated updates this time, yeah. but maybe a more dedicated highlighted day would be nice. I think there's a lot of important work done by various groups. Uh, for example, the accessibility uh, team is is really great. And Drupal would always uh, would always benefit from more people uh, with more experience in accessibility to helping out in various areas. So that would be really great to um, further improve on. Uh, also, I think uh, there's there's a lot of other initiatives that are not necessarily um, Drupal core initiatives, like the events organization group would be, I think. An interesting one to highlight and and have like uh, workshops and, and knowledge sharing and more things about events because I think scaling more Drupal events and, and sharing experiences and involving more people in them that would help a lot in terms of reaching all the other goals that we have. Yeah, and actually similar, Rachel, you were saying, you know, a mentoring initiative, you know, as a focus. I think that's fantastic and uh, having that first day as being like more of the orientation. I know we kind of scrambled to get that sort of in place, but, you know, having a more of a orientation that first day and actually something that uh, Rachel, you, because you had that, uh, you had an issue on open social itself. Yeah. Uh, I think it would be a lot of fun to work on open social and kind of find mm -hmm. that tune that a bit better for everybody um so that you know just everything else is more effective well i can't see the open social team complaining about that idea they would love that <laughs> yeah um well thank you very much everyone that was that was fantastic it was really good ideas there and uh, i'm looking forward to hearing how drupal 10 has been so successful in really not that long it's not going to be long now, is it? Yep. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I'll see you again soon. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.